Hey, hey, hello, I'm Kirokan, also known as Corvus Cornix, and welcome to Class of Movie Rambles, where I'll talk about old movies that I found in my class of well-cleaning. This week's movie is Thor, The Dark World, and it was made in 2014, and it's about 1 hour and 52 minutes long, and the movie starts with a war between the Asgardians and the Dark Elves. And the Dark Elves has this item called the Aether, which is spelled with an A, and uh, the Oscar- Oscardians defeats the Dark Elves and they take the Aether away and bury it deep underground because the Aether can't be destroyed. And I think the Aether is like one of the Affinity Stones. Uh, I think I think so anyway, I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, cutting to Loki being in chains in Asgard and he is talking to Odin he, and he gets put into a dungeon for the crime that he committed in the first movie. Uh, and then cutting to a battlefield with Thor, with Thor's friends fighting, and Thor arrives, and he gets challenged by an uh, like a stone giant or a golem, and he defeats it with one hit, and the the conflict is over just like that. And then cutting to him arriving in Asgard and talking to his father Odin about the um, <clears throat> his uh, love interest on Earth, and then later there is a feast and they celebrate the victory, but Thor is not really happy he's kind of bummed and down about it and then cutting to london where his human love interest jane is having dinner with this random guy and she's really awkward and she 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 wants to meet new people but she really hasn't you know uh let thor go so they were supposed to order like seafood or something and it doesn't work and uh, uh jane's friend darcy arrives and uh, she crashes the dinner and uh really funny scene and um, th- she follows Darcy out to a car and uh, Darcy has an intern named Ian it is a funny like uh, reoccurring joke that Darcy doesn't even remember her own intern's name and he always refers to it like my name is Ian how can you forget it's a simple name or whatever <clears throat> uh, so there's this this scene where uh, cutting back to like uh, Selvig, uh, Eric Selvig like um he was, he was like a doctor in the first movie, still a doctor in this one, and he is at Stonehenge, running around naked with like these metal rods, and I thought it was funny, they have this, this CBS kind of blurred, censored out version, I thought it was super funny, because he's doing something weird. <clears throat> and then uh, Darcy, Ian, and Jane goes to a warehouse to look at it, an anomaly, because Darcy picked this up somehow, and this is like this scene from... Uh, uh, this other mate movie that I looked at called um, like the Animatrix this is the same like the Beyond I think it was called they go into like a warehouse it's exactly the same premise there's like uh, teleporting uh, anomalies all over and Jane gets separated b- from the group and uh, Ian loses the car keys because he throws it in a portal and the keys doesn't come back but they, uh, they will, this is a thing that will become important later in the movie I guess so Jane ends up in the chamber of the um, of the ether, and she touches the ether, and it's just really stupid, and she get infected by it. So the ether is now inside of her, and it will eventually kill her. And then cutting back to Thor on uh, talking to Heimdall, which is the gate guardian of Asgard, he's talking about all the things that've been happening, and Heimdall kind of says like he can't see Jane anymore; she has disappeared from the grid. So Jane wakes up in the the warehouse and she goes outside and uh, it starts to rain and Thor is there and they start to talk and she slaps him in the face because uh, he has been avoiding her for such a long and he explains that he's been fighting a war on different fronts and everything and she kind of forgives him for it and they're about to kiss and Darcy interrupts the whole thing and then a police officer tries to touch Jean but... Uh, and, uh, but he gets flung through the air because something is wrong. She has the ether in her. And Thor, Thor takes Jean to Asgard, which is not a good thing to do. Uh, and now the Dark Elf re- leader, kind of, they, they realize where the ether is at because it's activated somehow. That There is somehow bound to them. I don't know how. So the Dark Elf leader, uh, Malekath, he does this ritual in one of his, uh, uh, one of his lieutenants or generals. And uh, there's like in a deserted planet. I think it's their home planet. And meanwhile, in Asgard, Jean is getting a physical, and Odin enters the room, and he realizes, and he's not happy, by the way, as I said, and he realizes that she has the ether inside of her. And there's a pointer scene when he explains that the ether is inside of her; it's very dangerous, and they can't take it out of her, basically. And then cutting to the Dark Elf leader, uh, 
you know, doing some sort of ritual and putting like an ether inside of his general is really weird. And uh, back at all Asgard, uh, this general or, or uh, lieutenant is going with another group of prisoners disguised as a barbarian, and he gets put into the same prison block as uh, Loki. And in the prison block, Loki is talking to Frigga, but we find out that it's a hologram. And Frigga is basically Thor's mother, and uh, I believe Loki's stepmom. <clears throat> and Loki tries to justify his actions to Frigga, but she is not having it. Uh, and then, even later, Jane and Thor talks to Frigga uh, outside, I guess. And then the Dark Elves in the prison triggers the ether inside of him and he turns into a hulking beast and uh, breaks out. And what happens is that, that he frees the other prisoners all except Loki. And Loki kind of says like, well, you might want to take a left on the way out or something. It's kind of a funny scene because uh, Loki's all just mischievous in general. And you don't really know if he's good or bad, but he's like in the middle. He, sometimes he's good, sometimes he's bad, just like, like the folklore, I guess. <clears throat> And then what happens is a fighting breaks out, and then Jane goes with Frigga, and Heimdall stops a, a, a dark elf ship by just jumping on it and stabbing it with a dagger, which I thought was like, what? How did he do that? He, he doesn't have any superpowers. I think he can see all the things that's going on, but he, other than that, he, he doesn't have any superpowers. Uh, but anyway, the ship gets destroyed, and uh, Heimdall uses the, the sword that he has to activate a shield around the citadel, but the shield is destroyed or generator and as a ship crashes into the, the chamber, the main chamber and there's a fighting going on there and like a, and then Frigga is forced to fight Malikath and uh, Frigga dies. And the whole reason why they were there was just to get Jane because she has the ether inside of her. And uh, Thor arrives too late to save Frigga and Odin enters the room as well and he's distraught by this and uh, there is a burial scene and then Loki gets in informed what's been happening to Frigga and he gets really pissed and angry and then cut into Selvry practicing a speech at the asylum uh, because he's crazy obviously or they think he's crazy he's having like two shoes and putting them against each other and uh, at the end of the speech he says like any questions uh, and this is a Stan Lee cameo and Stanley says, yes, can I have my shoes back? And I think it's one of the more funnier Stanley's cameos, actually. Uh, yeah. And then cutting back to Asgard with Thor and o Odin arguing about Jane and what to do because she has the eater inside of her. And uh, the, at this point, um, As Asgard is defenseless and they can be basically invaded at any time because they don't have the... Everything is basically down, even the Bifrost. So Thor goes to talk to Heimdall, which is the Gate Guardian. And he asks him to basically betray Odin's wishes. So Thor wants to take Jane to the um, to the Dark Age leader. I don't know why. Maybe negotiate a peace or something or destroy him. Maybe, probably destroy him because he's Thor, right? So he talks to his warband buddies and uh, Heimdall agrees to help him. And they, they have this elaborate plan of him escaping because... Uh, <sighs> The, there, are, there are secret ways that you can take out of Asgard without using the Bifrost, so Loki knows these secret ways. So Thor goes to free Loki, but immediately puts him back in chains, and uh, they arrive out on the, uh, the drive out from the Citadel in the Dark Elf ship, and they evade the, uh, the troops, basically, of the Asgardian army, and they Loki drives him into, like, a, it looks like a solid wall, but it's like a way... And it's a way out to the uh, the home planet of the Dark Elf, if that makes sense. Like a hidden kind of way in and out. And then cutting to Darcy and Ian signing Cell Regard of the Mental Ward or the Asylum. And it's kind of funny because, uh, <laughs> for multiple reasons, but uh, Ian acts as uh, Selvig's uh, son. And uh, there's this funny scene where Selvig is just weird and crazy. And there's like, he, they put up like a, a bag of pills, lots of pills that he just takes to be sane. Be because apparently he had a god inside of his head from the previous movie, or really weird anyway. And they walk outside the mental ward and th things are already starting to act up and be really weird because the conjunction is about to happen when all the worlds are kind of close to each other. And I think that's the part of, of like the, or the plan for the Dark Elf, uh, Malakath, to use the ether to destroy or do as he wish because that's what 
bad guys do, uh, you know. And then Jane and Thor arrives through the uh, the portal, and uh, uh, Loki gets freezed with bonds, and uh, he stabs him in the side of uh, Thor in the side with a dagger, and uh, he cuts up one of his arm and pushing down a hill in front of the the Malakat, and it it was it's just part of an illusion just to lure the ether out of uh, Jane. So Malekith tries to draw out the ether out of Jane. And uh, while this is happening, uh, Thor breaks the illusion and he uses his hammer, the lightning of his hammer, to be more exact, try to destroy the, e destroy the ether, but it doesn't work. And there's a battle and the bad guy escape, obviously. And there's a fighting between the, the other Dark Elves and Loki uh, sacrifice himself, but you know he's coming back because he's a trickster. So uh, they defeat the bad guys, and Thor is obviously distraught that his half brother is dead. Uh, but there's like a storm brewing, and they have to go into a cave because it's really storming on this planet. And all of a sudden, they realize that there's this cave is actually a way. So they kind of uh, Jane gets a phone call from her uh, dinner date, and he, he asks if you want to try again. And uh, he, he, she basically keeps him on the line long enough to find a way back into the, the real world. And they go to see like Selvig and Ian and the other guys to figure out what to do. Uh, so, and actually back at, um, back at uh, Asgard, Loki is masquerading as a guard and he goes to Odin and basically tells Odin that Thor, his son, is dead. So Selvig kind of find us, finds out that Green Witch is the, the point where they need to go because there's, there's the place where the conversion is the strongest. So they go there and the Dark Elves arrives in their ship and there's a, there's a fight between, between all the different parties. Thor is fighting Malekath and it's not going well and he gets teleported through anomalies and different worlds and they, they fight. And then Thor takes... By the help of Selvig and the other guys, he figures out that if you use Jane's kind of... They're kind of like reality anchors. So they can't really destroy the ether, but they can destroy Malika's body. And that's exactly what they do. They He throws them as spares and he destroys Malika and the ether is kind of let out. And that it ends on a pretty good note. And then later, Selvig, Ian, Jane and Darcy is eating breakfast alone. And then cutting to Thor back in Asgard, going to talk to his father Odin, showing that he is alive and everything. And um, <clears throat> and uh, Odin kind of gives him his blessing, but as soon as Thor leaves, it's shown that it's actually not uh, Odin; it's Loki in disguise. So that's the end of the movie. <laughs> so what do I think about this movie? It's actually a good movie. And it's a lot of actions happening at the same time. It's not super long and it gets the job done. There are some minor scenes that I don't really like, but overall it's a really good movie. So yeah, go watch it. Anyway, anyway thanks for listening and for watching and take care.